Megalopolis is a uh, is a rated R two hour and eighteen minute um, Francis Ford Coppola fever dream. Um, <laughs> in this <laughs> abstract fever dream, um, the city of New Rome hosts the conflict between Caesar Catalina, a brilliant artist uh, played by um, you know an actor that I actually love, Adam Driver. Um, in favor of a utopian future, all while the greedy mayor, Franklin Cicero, Cicero, uh, these names might sound familiar to you, played by Giancarlo Esposito. Um, um, basically, they're in conflict, and between them is his daughter, Julia, her loyalty divided between her father and her beloved. Um, this movie is, is a movie that is 30 plus years in the making. Actually, I believe it's 44 years. Back in 1980, Francis Ford Coppola wanted to um, wanted to make this movie, but he couldn't. He couldn't. And if you guys know who Francis Ford Coppola is, he there's a reason why that name sounds familiar because he's famous, like super famous. Yeah. yeah I feel he, like Adam Driver is collecting directors for his resume, but in every <laughs> one of their worst movies. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, he hasn't made great. He, Adam Driver made the point that he's not going to do what people want him. He's going to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, that's very evident that he's not taking advice from everyone, anyone. Well, in all in all fairness, this movie is going to be talked about for quite some time probably. <laughs> yeah. Not good. in a good way, I don't believe. Now there are some people who think that this movie is is actually uh genius and and there is a fine line between um genius and insanity um, insanity there is there really <laughs> is uh and, and some people might look at something that's totally insane and think it's genius when i went to the theater uh last night to go watch it um i was the only one there and that made me nervous it was 7 10 on a thursday and that's not a good sign uh, another guy walked in and sat down after i sat down and we were watching the movie and we'll get into more what it's about but halfway through the movie um when i'm already like texting brian and half watching it myself the guy gets up he starts laughing and then just walks out of the theater <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because <laughs> oh this is so dumb <laughs> he, he, he just laughed and got up and walked out it was hilarious because and guys this is not a comedy there's nothing funny in this nothing movie whatsoever it, yeah but there's some things that happen in it that are so embarrassing like you're embarrassed i'm watching it's I'm cringe like, oh, God. these are like these are great actors listen guys who's in this movie dustin hoffman's in this movie um john voight's in this movie shia labeouf's in this movie lawrence fishburne's in this movie talia shia rocky's wife is in this movie uh, there's uh db sweeney there's all kinds of people in this movie um including adam driver and giancarlo esposito uh natalie emmanuel aubrey plaza normally solid strong actors yeah i love Aud audrey plaza i love her so much i would say the one positive you can take away from this is you do get to see her girly parts so there you go so if the thing you've about, always wanted to do that you got that yeah but all the clips you were sending me to i was like it looks like she's doing like theater tests like uh, she's in acting class will. and she's doing monologues it's really it's really bad like it really bad let me tell you why it's it's like that. And I don't think it's her fault. Um, so basically this this vision for from Francis Ford Coppola, it was he wanted to explain like he wanted to ask questions of our of our society, like why we choose to do the things that we do. Uh, this this story is um, and while you're watching it, by the way, it's very hard to pick up on some of these things, which is what right. one of the things that makes the movie so bad, because it is very abstract. There's, you know, five or ten minute segments where. You know, it's just like flashing lights and Adam Driver looking like he's going crazy. Nothing's <laughs> happening. There's no story. You know, it's just like, you know, he's just there's like weird hands behind him making weird shapes and there's shadows yeah. on the buildings. <laughs> it, it's it's like it's very much like you go into an art gallery and you're like, the artist created this and there's no real explanation. But how does it make you feel? You know, that's kind of sad for the artist. <laughs> Well, and you can appreciate artwork that kind of makes you feel something. But the difference is with a movie, with a movie, you're telling a story. You can have a two hour and 18 minute piece of visual art if you want to. And, and listen, Francis Ford Coppola spent a big chunk of his own money making this $150 million movie. 
Oh my he, god. He sold uh he has he has a, a wine brand that's actually pretty popular. He sold a chunk of his of his very popular wine company in order to pay in order to get the money to back for this for this film. Oh my god. But and he did it and he's 83 years old and um and he he did it. He got it done. So what did he, what did he want to do? He wanted to ask some questions. Like what is the cost of of trying to create an, a utopia? And he asks he asks some really great questions. Like there these are eternally interesting questions. Like why does our society constantly why do why do these great civilizations fall, right? And and what is this battle between like the new thing that's coming to change which Adam Driver represents versus the old way which Giancarlo Esposito um um, represents and his daughter being the thing between the two. Um, this movie is interesting because they it, basically it takes place in a place called New Rome. It's essentially New York, present day New York, uh, but it's it's almost as if um, it's essentially like uh, if what Rome would look like today, you know, in New York, right? So you've got the Caesar, you've got all these different characters who do represent different things like Aubrey Plaza. She essentially represents the media, right? And she's screwing everybody. Well, doesn't that sound like America? <laughs> so, I mean, there's he's got some things, some interesting points of view here. But the problem is, for some, somehow, he just, he fails to, to get his points across. He fails to tell his story in such a way that the, that the audience can understand what it is he's trying to communicate. And that's where it becomes a problem. And I understand that he wants people to think about this for generations, but most people are going to think of it as uh, as something that was, you know, that doesn't make any sense and is a failure. Right. I mean, because it, it was a failure. Like, people aren't watching it. So, right. So, you know, you said there's a fine line between uh, genius and insanity. There's also that fine line between people thinking it's genius and insanity. Like, it's entirely possible that the old, you know, you know obviously Coppola was... <clears throat> Is a legendary <clears throat> director. Does does that mean he's a legendary writer, though? Does that mean mm. that in his old age he, you know, maybe has lost a little bit of that fire? Because like the older you get, the less cohesive, you know, the less cognizant you are of your previous skill. Let's be real. Well, I used to if be you a go world back... class Counter Strike player, and now I can't, I can't, I can't play for five minutes without dying. So. Well, if you go back and you take a look at Francis Ford Coppola, the last great movie he made was Bram Stoker's Dracula. And that was way back in uh, 1994, I believe. Oh, geez. So, you know, when you take a look at it, let me double check that. But yeah, when you take a look at it, it's been, yeah, 1992, he did Bram Stoker's Dracula. That was the really the, the last great movie. Now, he did do Jack, which, uh, which, which is not a horrible movie, but not a great movie. That was with Robin Williams, who was a kid who grew up really fast as an adult. He did The Rainmaker, which was the John Grisham novel, uh, which is eh, okay. But it's been reasonably, you know, 30 years since he's directed anything worth a, worth a damn. Now, he is the guy who did all did the Godfather movies. He did The Outsider. He did Apocalypse Now. I mean, he's got, you know, he's one of those great guys that came out the same time George Lucas did and Steven Spielberg. He was one of the, one of the guys, right? One of the, one of those directors when we talk about the right director, but you're right. He's done little to nothing since then. And he's produced movies, uh, none of which are really that wonderful. And, uh, but he wanted to do this before he died. He dedicated the movie to his wife. It was something he envisioned. And I think, um, he just was unable to tell a cohesive story that made any sense. It was embarrassing, frankly, embarrassing there, there's also a little bit of like um from what i saw and what i've read after the fact seems like there's a lot of, a little bit of uh personal politics in there that probably muddy it up a little bit well it would be great it would muddy it up if it made sense in the first place like you know even though you're right there are some you know there's guys with <laughs> there's guys with red hats sure seems awfully a lot like like shia labeouf is playing trump it does seem like in his mind it's, you know Maybe it's not on the nose, but you do get that kind of flavor. Aubrey Plaza is obviously, uh, you know, the media. You've got um, um, 
let me get it real quick here. You've got uh, Giancarlo Esposito. He's the mayor. Um, so, you know, he represents kind of like um, maybe maybe he represents like old Democrats. Right. Adam Driver represents the new Democrats. Right. Trying to create the utopia. Um, you've got you know, he obviously doesn't like the media because Aubrey Plaza is not a character that <laughs> that is very uh, beloved here. But <laughs> it seems like to me he's trying to create if I were going to guess uh, Natalie Emmanuel, by the way, uh, who plays Julius Cicero, beautiful woman, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. British. Yeah, she's she really is uh, an interesting person to look at. Um, she, re- you know, she represents um, what I believe is, say, the the the, the current Democratic Party uh, taking their old vision and their new vision and coming together to create something good. Right. Or better. Right. Shia LaBeouf is probably Trump. Um, John Voight. Uh, is 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 perhaps the Republican. Now, what's interesting is Adam Driver's character is related to John Voight, so it could be his idea of melding some sort of left and right, you know, political ideology. You also together. might be overthinking it. <laughs> I could be. I could be. Now, he only he can tell you, and perhaps he will do a director's cut where he explains everything. But he did say he wanted people this for people something to think about. The problem was at the end. He gave us a solid ending for this movie. He he gave us his opinion. He told us what he wanted. And uh, and I won't ruin it for you if you (laughs) doubt you want to watch it. So is this movie going to be one of those movies that becomes a cult classic in the next 20 years? Or is it going to be in the five dollar DVD bin at Walmart? Let me tell you. Well, let me tell you this. Um, Because it's Francis Ford Coppola, it's always going to get respect. You know, it's kind of like that movie Eyes Wide Shut um, by Stanley Kubrick. I like Eyes Wide Shut. I, I think it's a terrible movie. I hate it. I like that movie. Um, I don't. I don't know how you could possibly. Like you got to watch the 4K. Uh, no, no, un- it doesn't matter how. Version. Well, this is a. By the way, this is a beautiful movie. First off, let me tell you, graphically, it's beautiful. So, but and I can tell you exactly how much I give a shit about that. Very little. No, so, I get that. Like, but if you don't watch the right version of Eyes Wide Shut, then there's parts missing. That ruined the story. I, I, I like the story. I watched well. like the edited version that came out. Uh, like I guess it was. I don't know if it was theatrically or whatever, mm-hmm. but I hated it. And then um, <clears throat> Tom from Midnight's Edge sent me the the 4K unedited version, mm-hmm. like the like the unedited cut, like the original his his original vision. And there were literally like it's a it's a different movie. It's a different movie. There's parts okay. in it that actually make sense. All of a sudden, you know who that woman is. You know what Tom's motivation are is. Well, well that's not that's not the one they put out. No, so, that's not the one they put out. Right. Right. But let's just let's just talk about whatever you do. Your director's cuts later, and it changes things. It's wonderful. Um, but uh, so I think he's respected, and for that reason, a lot of people are giving him kid gloves. A lot of people reviewing this thing are like, you know, well, you know, you can kind of see what he was doing, and it's beautiful, blah blah blah. Um, and it is, it is beautiful, to, beautiful visually, like that you do feel like you're like in a dream a little bit. Um, Adam Driver is an excellent actor. Um, and I think they were going for this. I think the, the dialogue and the way, the, what, what I showed you, some of the scenes was almost like, like a Shakespeare play, like, like a Roman play acting out. And so even the acting was like, was, was almost like, uh, um, what's the word we used earlier? Was was theatrical, not just theatrical, but art house. Uh, difficult, yeah. Art house. I, I just used the word. I can't remember. It was um when he first. It was his fever dream. What did I say? It was. It was abstract. abstract. The acting is almost feels a little abstract. Like it would be so easy for them to just explain to you what's going on, like c- to act it out. But instead, it's almost done in like riddles. Yeah, and I'm so not horrible. sure. I'm not sure why he wanted to do that. I mean, he wanted to give people and listen, they're going to be talking about this for a long time. I promise you, this is something people, but it's going to be talked about as perhaps being one of the worst movies right now. It's got a 35% um, from, from fans. Even the critics have given it a 46%, which is kind, which is kind because uh, there is one, I, there was one scene that I actually liked in the movie. I'm surprised the critics don't have it at 99%. <laughs> it would be impossible. You would be a joke as a critic, if you rated this thing good, it's just not good. He, he, 
characters disappear. Like literally the second half of the movie, characters who were introduced, just there you never hear from them again. Right. Like their storylines just end. I mean, you've got um um so many strange little sidetracks that just make absolutely zero sense that it's it's painfully obvious that he wanted this to be probably a five hour movie or six hour movie and the studio said no. <laughs> that can happen. Absolutely and so it got not. edited into whatever the hell you know, the guy knows how to make a movie. Apocalypse Now was was of its time was groundbreaking, you know, and this feels like he's trying to break some sort of ground again. But the problem is, is that, you know, that movie had a great story. This story is not good. Although Grace Vanderwall uh, plays the 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 vestige uh, virgin in this. They have this this scene where it's basically like kind of the Roman Coliseum, but it takes place in Madison Square Garden. And she sings this song about being this Vestal Virgin. And that's actually a pretty good song. Um, but that's really all I can say. D.B. Sweeney's in it. I love D.B. Sweeney. Um, some people who had been canceled, he kind of brought them back. Uh, Jason Schwartzman's in it. Um, it's – I will never watch this movie again. <laughs> right. I lost two hours and 18 minutes of my life that I can never get back again. And – but if you're really bored and like you they're like there's nothing else for you to do, yeah, throw it on, you know, check it out. Yeah, if he comes out on streaming and you're bored and maybe maybe like maybe you're one of those people that really likes to get, you know, uh uh drunk or high or something, maybe it's way better oh, maybe if you're high. Not. Yeah, or if let's say you're an Adam Driver fan and you've committed to watching all of his movies, you will have now watched the worst one. <laughs> and, and, and that's saying a lot because 65 million, which he was also in, was a freaking terrible movie. I, th I it looks like it's made. Uh, let me double. Three hundred and seventeen dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's earned a little over four million bucks. Wow, that's rough. Now, that was a couple days ago, so maybe now I was the only one. No, there was one other guy in the theater, so we paid twenty six dollars to watch it. But that's seven ten on a Thursday night. Not Friday, Saturday night, but listen, for a weekday, that's the prime time you're going to go watch a movie is 7.10, right? On a weeknight. Right, yeah. So, yeah, disturbing. Absolutely disturbing. Well, um, looking at uh, my Cinemark page here to see what seats are available for <laughs> Megalopolis. And um, let's see. Uh, all of them. <laughs> dude check this out so it says here er, the cast members everybody in the cast made somewhere between seven and ten million dollars each so that so just one cast member has made more than the movie has made oh at this god point. that's rough do it for friday night okay let me do it for friday night do it for friday night because that's that's that really says okay uh it looks like there are two people currently <laughs> these two people and what what crazy oh, no. people chose these two seats right in the front? Like you're not going to go back here and get the good, the good seats? Are those recliners? They're all recliners. Yeah. Then that's where I sit. Right here in the I front. I like to sit. I like to sit right behind the this row. Yeah, you're right. Oh, the handicap. Well, yeah, because I got unfettered view. I like the, those are my favorite seats. Well, this is Friday at uh, <clears throat> seven thirty-five or whatever, and there are two people currently sitting in that. This theater. this movie is going to make less than ten million dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you know what? It beat Bros. It beat Bros. Did it? Did it make? Did it? Yeah, I think Bros. Like it already beat Bros. Because Bros. made like three million dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, let me tell you, Bros. Probably cost like five million dollars to make. So, did it beat bros? No, I actually want to see <laughs> box office now. I remember the last time we checked, it was like dismal how much it made. Oh, no. So, bros actually made uh, domestic $11,628,000. So, worldwide, it made a little over $14 million. It hasn't beat bros yet. It hasn't beat bros. <laughs> That's it your will. metric. It <laughs> <laughs> I think eventually people were going to watch it. It'll do, it'll do better in streaming. Because people don't want to go see a train wreck at the theater. They don't want to pay these prices. But they might be like, all right, let me see what is so bad. They're going to they're gonna buy it or they're going to rent it on Amazon. And they're going to watch it for about 
12 to 15 minutes and they're going to turn that shit off. I promise wow. you. Cause that's about the time I was like, let me tell you for this to be the worst movie I've ever seen theatrically released means that it's, it's worse than Showgirls, which I walked out of <clears throat> in the 90s. Dude, I like Showgirls, so. too. Like, we're, we're, let's, we're on the... We're, you got to watch the director's cut of that. Um, I, that. That's not what comes out in the theater, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Theatrically what, I'm watched. telling you what comes out in the theater... I was too far. young to watch that in the theater, though. I, I would have had to have well, snuck yeah, in. True. The thing about, the, about, about this movie, though, when it goes to streaming, they're going to call it like, it's a hit. Number one movie for the last five days. They're going to do that, and I'll tell you why. Because people are going to be curious, and they're going to watch the first five minutes, and it only takes a few minutes for it to trigger a view. So yeah, Nef- the, the Netflix algorithm or whatever is going to make it look like it's on top of the world when everyone's checking out at 10 minutes. 